The submarine hummed. A low, constant drone filled the confined space, a reminder of the mechanical heart that kept us alive. It was the sound of the engine, the lifeblood of our vessel, the sea serpent. This sound was both comforting and unnerving, a steady beat in the silence of the deep. I, Petty Officer Mark Jenkins, was on watch. My eyes scanned the dimly lit control panels, my ears attuned to every sound. The sonar screen glowed green in the dim light, casting an eerie glow on my face. It was a beacon in the darkness, a window into the unknown. It was my job to watch for any sign of trouble in the black abyss outside. The ocean was vast and mysterious, hiding secrets in its depths. The ocean was alive tonight. Strange creatures moved in the shadows, their forms barely visible on the sonar. Strange clicks and groans echoed through the speakers, a symphony of the deep. Each sound was a puzzle piece, a clue to the mysteries around us. I adjusted the dials, trying to filter out the noise. Suddenly I heard it, a whisper, a faint, raspy voice that sent chills down my spine. Help me, it seemed to say. Please, someone help me. The voice was desperate, filled with a sorrow that was almost tangible. My heart pounded in my chest. The sound was so clear, so real, I couldn't believe my ears. I spun around, searching the cramped sonar room. Was I imagining things? The pressure and isolation could play tricks on the mind. Had the pressure finally gotten to me? The weight of the ocean above us was immense, a constant reminder of our fragile existence. I took a deep breath, trying to calm my nerves. I needed to stay focused, to be sure of what I had heard. I had to be sure. The lives of my crewmates depended on my vigilance. I rewound the sonar recording, listening intently. There it was again. The whisper, clearer this time as if it was calling out to me specifically. The whisper, clear as day. It was unmistakable now. Someone or something was out there reaching out from the depths. I raced down the narrow corridors of the sea serpent, my heart pounding in my chest. My boots thudding against the metal floor echoed through the confined space, amplifying my urgency. I burst into the mess hall, my breath coming in short, sharp gasps. There, my friend, Chief Petty Officer Ben Carter, sat nursing a cup of coffee, looking as relaxed as ever. Ben, you won't believe this. I gasped, out of breath, my words tumbling over each other in my haste. I heard a voice on the sonar. It was clear, unmistakable. A voice? Come on, Mark, you're working too hard. Ben's skepticism was evident, but I could see a flicker of concern in his eyes. No, I'm serious, I insisted, my voice steadying. It said, help me. The words echoed in my mind, chilling me to the bone. Ben sighed and took a sip of his coffee, his demeanor shifting from skepticism to contemplation. He knew I wasn't the type to make up stories, especially not about something this serious. But a voice on the sonar? That was impossible. Or was it? Look, just forget about it, Ben said, trying to dismiss the unease that was creeping into his voice. It's probably just some weird ocean noise, he added, though he didn't sound entirely convinced. I shook my head, unconvinced. There was something more to this, something we were missing. As I turned to leave, I noticed something strange, something that made my heart skip a beat. A small folded piece of paper was tucked under Ben's coffee mug, almost hidden from view. It read, they can hear you. The word sent a shiver down my spine, confirming my worst fears. Fear coiled in my stomach. Who wrote that note, and what did it mean? I showed it to Ben, my hand trembling. He read it slowly, his eyes widening. Okay, this is getting weird, he admitted. We need to talk to someone. We headed straight for the captain's quarters. Captain Thompson, a grizzled veteran with a no-nonsense attitude, listened patiently to our story. Even he seemed unsettled by the note. A voice on the sonar, he repeated, stroking his chin thoughtfully. That's impossible. The sonar only picks up sound waves, not voices. He paused, his gaze fixed on something beyond us. Unless, he murmured, more to himself than to us. Unless it's something else entirely. The captain decided to investigate. He ordered a full systems check of the sonar equipment, but everything came back normal. There was no logical explanation for the voice or the note. As the hours ticked by, the atmosphere on board the Sea Serpent grew tense. Whispers of a haunting began to circulate among the crew. 
Strange things started happening. Doors slammed shut on their own. Lights flickered erratically. One night, I was jolted awake by a blood-curdling scream. It came from the engine room. I rushed out into the corridor to find several crew members gathered around the entrance, their faces pale with fear. What happened? I asked, my heart pounding. It's Jones! One of the crew members stammered, his voice trembling. He... he just vanished into thin air. The disappearance of Jones sent a chill through the entire crew. The sea serpent, once a symbol of safety and strength, now felt like a steel coffin, trapping us with an unseen terror. Captain Thompson, his face etched with worry, decided to check the ship's log for any clues about past incidents. As he flipped through the pages, a faded entry caught his eye. It was from the Sea Serpent's maiden voyage, decades ago. The voice. It started again today, the entry read, scratching at the hull, whispering my name. I can't escape it. It knows what I did. The captain's blood ran cold. This wasn't the first time the Sea Serpent had experienced something like this. Whatever was haunting them, it had been here before. The captain shared the chilling discovery with the remaining crew. Fear hung heavy in the air. We were trapped, miles beneath the surface, with something we didn't understand. Maybe it's some kind of electromagnetic interference, she suggested. Or a hallucination caused by the pressure. But deep down we all knew the truth. This was something else. Something sinister. The voice on the sonar, the strange occurrences, the captain's log entry, it all pointed to a single, horrifying conclusion. The Sea Serpent wasn't just a submarine, it was a tomb, and we were the next victims. Panic began to set in. The crew, once a cohesive unit, started to turn on each other. Suspicions ran rampant. Was one of us responsible for what was happening, or were we all doomed? The captain, desperate to regain control, ordered us to search every inch of the submarine. We were to find the source of the haunting, whatever it took. We fanned out through the narrow corridors, our flashlights cutting through the darkness. The air was thick with tension, the silence broken only by the creaking of the hull and the frantic beating of our own hearts. As I rounded a corner I heard a noise, a soft guttural growl coming from the shadows ahead. And in that moment, we knew the hunt had truly begun. I froze, my blood turning to ice. The growl came again, closer this time. I raised my flashlight, its beam trembling, and shone it into the darkness. Two eyes, glowing an eerie green, stared back at me. They were unlike anything I had ever seen before. Cold, reptilian, filled with an ancient hunger. A low hiss escaped the creature's maw, revealing rows of razor-sharp teeth. It lunged, its claws outstretched, and I stumbled back in terror. For a moment, time seemed to stand still. Then with a surge of adrenaline, I turned and ran. I raced through the corridors, the creature's heavy footsteps pounding behind me. I could hear its enraged roars echoing through the submarine, shaking its very foundations. I burst into the control room, where Ben and the captain were huddled over a map. It's here, I gasped, pointing back down the corridor. The thing from the sonar! The captain didn't hesitate. We need to surface now, he shouted, his voice strained. Ben, send out a distress signal. Mark, help me with the ballast controls. We worked frantically, our movements fueled by pure terror. The submarine tilted sharply as we began our desperate ascent. The sea serpent groaned and shuddered as it fought its way towards the surface. The creature's roars grew louder, closer. It was right behind us. Suddenly, the submarine lurched violently. The lights flickered and died, plunging us into darkness. What happened? Ben shouted, his voice laced with panic. We're stuck! The captain yelled back. Something's blocking the escape hatch. The creature's triumphant roar echoed through the submarine. We were trapped. There was nowhere left to run. The silence that followed was deafening. It was as if the ocean itself had swallowed all sound, leaving us in a void of nothingness. We huddled together in the darkness, listening to the creature's movements, each rasping breath a hammer blow to our sanity. The tension was palpable, every creak of the submarine's hull a reminder of our fragile existence. 
the sea serpent had become our tomb. Then, a new sound emerged from the depths, breaking the oppressive silence. A rhythmic tapping on the hull just outside the control room. It was deliberate, almost mocking, as if the creature was communicating with us. The creature was toying with us, letting us know it was still there, waiting. It was a game of cat and mouse, and we were the prey. We never heard from the sea serpent again. The silence that followed was both a relief and a torment, leaving us to wonder about its fate. The official report cited catastrophic mechanical failure as the cause of the tragedy. But those of us who survived knew better. But I know the truth. The truth that haunts my dreams and shadows my waking moments. The sea serpent didn't just sink, it was taken. Taken by a force beyond our understanding. A force that defied the laws of nature. Dragged down into the abyss by something ancient and evil a creature that had lurked in the depths for eons waiting for its next victim. Sometimes late at night, when the wind howls and the rain beats against my window, I can still hear it. The echoes of that fateful encounter, the whisper from the deep, help me, a plea that reverberates through the darkness, a reminder of the terror that lies beneath the waves.